This is the Beaulieu Vineyard 2019 Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a very intricate and drinkable Cabernet Sauvignon from Beaulieu. And um, I think it's something that we're going to enjoy today. Beaulieu actually has a very interesting history related to Napa Valley and what's gone on there. They've been at the heart of it. They've actually had a lot to do with the history of what's gone on in the Napa Valley region. They've got a hundred year history themselves. So we're going to dive into that a little bit today and learn a little bit more about them. Um, one thing that you learn about the Beaulieu Vineyard is the Rutherford dust. And what that means is that the tannins are kind of cocoa powdered. That's probably an easy way to explain it. But a Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley that has that tannin, that kind of um, effect in your mouth and, and what they do specifically here, it's really what makes a Cabernet nice about Napa Valley and something that they especially focus on here at Beaulieu Vineyard. So I want you to sit back and relax, pour yourself something nice to drink, and let's enjoy this 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon from Beaulieu Vineyard together. Beaulieu Vineyard was actually established by the De La Tours. And George De La Tour, the husband, he was the one who established their first tract of uh, land, which was 127 acres in 1903, which was the purchase they made in Rutherford, California. And that was called BB Ranch Number 1. And then they made a second purchase in 1910 that's called BB Ranch 2. And that basically is what assembled Beaulieu Vineyard and what it's become now in there in Rutherford, California. Um, during that time, he was also importing vines, pest-resistant vines from Paris. And he actually established a, a, um, a special growing and grafting nursery for these vines that they were started to import to California. And they were the ones who primarily imported everything from Europe during that period of these types of vines into the Napa Valley area. So that's an important piece of history, something I didn't know. And now I kind of understand why um, there's a certain amount of Rutherford dust that goes across all of Napa Valley, because most likely a lot of these vines and, and growth of these vines into the, into the future and what has been established has come from um, the De La Tours. And during Prohibition, which is also interesting, La Tour, George was intelligent enough or smart enough or you know cunning enough to realize that he needed a permit to produce um, altar wine, which is church wine, that actually allowed him to outcompete the his competitors because a lot of them had to shut down shop. They weren't able to produce anymore. Obviously, nobody knows how long, how nobody knew how long prohibition would last, but he was able to continue to produce and continue to grow his um, his winemaking expertise and expand because he was the only one who was able to produce during that time. So smart move and the way you should do business. The presentation of the bottle is actually very nice. Um, I think it's classic. I like the text. I think they've done some smart things here. I love the label on it. This label is like, I don't know, a deep black that goes on a black bottle. I mean, this is, I mean, this, you can see through it a little bit, but it's very dark. It's almost impossible to see through. So very dark, very dark label. Got the nice text on the front with the gold, which is, you know, for me, I love gold and black. I think it just looks great. So nice, nice presentation, nice bottle in general. Now let's go ahead and break the foil and uncork it and see what we think. Pull out my little trusty foil remover. Okay. And then let's go ahead and uncork it. It's a nice cork. Everything looks fresh and perfect. I don't see any kind of leakage, anything at the top. So I think it was well taken care of. Let's get in there. And let's see. And nice. Cork looks perfect. Everything looks healthy and just like you want it to be. Mm -hmm. You smell dark fruit, berries immediately. Nice. Let's go ahead and give it a pour and see what we think. Turn that label around for you. Also, let's leave the cork up here so you can pay attention to that. Let's see what we have. Let's see that color. Mm -hmm. Coats the glass very well. The color is a deep ruby. Very nice. Very deep ruby. I would say almost a purple, but it's not a purple. I mean, I get blueberries, cassis, 
A little bit of spice. Great. Smells full bodied. It smells drinkable. I'll tell you that much. I'm ready to go for it now. Let's go ahead. Let's give it a taste and see what we think. Wow, nice. I think it's a little bit young. It could probably age for another three or four years. I would let this um, probably aerate for about five to 10 minutes. It needs a little bit of time to breathe. I mean, you could breathe, you could open it immediately, but or drink it immediately as soon as you open it, but it, it seems like it needs a little bit more time. Yeah, but the fruit, it's very nice. The tannins are great. That's that Rutherford dust that they talk about. You could just, you could feel those tannins explode, um, but in a nice way. I enjoy the fruit. I think it's just nice overall. Something I enjoy doing is pairing my wines and whiskeys with uh, snacks, something small, um, you know, something salty, something, you know, small. It doesn't have to be a lot of food. You can even pair it with a meal if you would like, but in my case here, I don't really have enough time for that. So today I'm gonna pair it with something small. We're gonna go with um, some crackers. We're gonna go with some olives. I've got two types of olives here. I've got one with blue cheese, another one with anchovy and the green olives. Got some, some of the normal crackers, one that's got a little pepper in it and one that's just plain, but the water crackers, a little bit of cheese. Um, this is like a Gouda. It's a kind of a sharp Gouda, it's a little aged. And then we've also got a white cheddar. That's an English white cheddar that's a little bit sweet. And of course, we've got some mustard to go along with it and also some cured meat. This is like almost like a salami. So for me, mixing cheese with wine is A pairing that I think is pretty normal, but I also like to put olives in there because I like a little bit of saltiness. And I have to say that's nice. Really good mix. Let's see what it tastes like with the cheese. Mm-hmm. That sweet white cheddar, wow. Really allows for those tannins to pop more and really allows for the blueberries to become a little more subtle, but part of the experience in general. Let's see what the good is like. Yeah, the age of that cheese is delicious and I really, really think adds and contributes overall to it. Maybe we'll try one of these anchovy olives and see where we land. You know, of course it's got a little bit more of a fishy taste. Very nice combination. I'd highly recommend those anchovies, uh, olives, green olives with this. this. This is great. So I want to thank you for learning a little bit about Beaulieu Vineyard. Also want to thank you for learning a little bit about this reserve, 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon from, from Beaulieu uh, Vineyard. Um, I think this is something that you obviously should try. It'd be great with uh, paired with you know, some kind of steak. It'd also be nice probably paired with uh, lamb. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you can put some comments, that's nice as well. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Make some suggestions if there's other things you want to learn about or if um, there's something I need to learn about, let me know. Thank you very much.